Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, March 16th, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our psalm for today is Psalm 31. Psalm 31, for the choir director, a psalm of David. Lord, I seek refuge in you. Let me never be disgraced. Save me by your righteousness. Listen closely to me. Rescue me quickly. Be a rock of refuge for me, a mountain fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. You lead and guide me for your name's sake. You will free me from the net that is secretly set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I entrust my spirit. You have redeemed me, Lord, God of truth. I hate those who are devoted to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your faithful love because you have seen my affliction. You know the troubles of my soul and have not handed me over to the enemy. You have set my feet in a spacious place. Be gracious to me, Lord, because I am in distress. My eyes are worn out from frustration, my whole being as well. Indeed, my life is consumed with grief and my years with groaning. My strength has failed because of my iniquity, and my bones waste away. I am ridiculed by all my adversaries and even by my neighbors. I am dreaded by my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street run from me. I am forgotten, gone from memory like a dead person, like broken pottery. I have heard the gossip of many. Terror is on every side. When they conspired against me, they plotted to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. The course of my life is in your power. Rescue me from the power of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me by your faithful love. Lord, do not let me be disgraced when I call on you. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them be quiet in Sheol. Let lying lips that arrogantly speak against the righteous in proud contempt be silenced. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you. In the presence of everyone, you have acted for those who take refuge in you. You hide them in the protection of your presence. You conceal them in a shelter from human schemes, from quarrelsome tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his faithful love to me in a city under siege. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. But you heard the sound of my pleading when I cried to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful ones. The Lord protects the loyal, but fully repays the arrogant. Be strong, and let your heart be courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Egypt was not the promised land, the land of Canaan was the promised land. That was the land that God had promised to give to Abraham's descendants. Jacob was very well aware of that. And so as he prepared to die, he made his um, sons swear to him that they would not bury him in Egypt, but would instead bury him in his ancestral burial cave, where Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob's wife Leah already were buried. Joseph also had that same confidence that the Lord would indeed fulfill his promise. And so when the time came for him to die, he also gave instructions to the people of Israel that when the Lord brought them out of Egypt and into the land of Canaan, they should take his remains with them and bury them in Canaan. Then he, that is Jacob, commanded them, I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my ancestors in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hethite. The cave is in the field of Machpelah near Mamre, in the land of Canaan. This is the field Abraham purchased from Ephron the Hethite as burial property. 
Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried there. Isaac and his wife Rebecca are buried there. And I buried Leah there. The field and the cave in it were purchased from the Hethites. When Jacob had finished giving charges to his sons, he drew his feet into the bed, took his last breath, and was gathered to his people. Then Joseph, leaning over his father's face, wept and kissed him. He commanded his servants, who were physicians, to embalm his father. So they embalmed Israel. They took 40 days to complete this, for embalming takes that long. And the Egyptians mourned for him 70 days. When the days of mourning were over, Joseph said to Pharaoh's household, If I have found favor with you, please tell Pharaoh that my father made me take an oath, saying, I am about to die. You must bury me there in the tomb that I made for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go and bury my father. Then I will return. So Pharaoh said, Go and bury your father in keeping with your oath. Then Joseph went to bury his father, and all Pharaoh's servants, the elders of his household, and all the elders of the land of Egypt went with him. And we go to verse 14. After Joseph buried his father, he returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had gone with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said to one another, If Joseph is holding a grudge against us, he will certainly repay us for all the suffering we caused him. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before he died, your father gave a command. Say this to Joseph. Please forgive your brother's transgression and their sin, the suffering they caused you. Therefore, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when their message came to him. His brothers also came to him, bowed down before him, and said, We are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You planned evil against me. God planned it for good to bring about the present result, the survival of many people. Therefore, don't be afraid. I will take care of you and your children. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph and his father's family remained in Egypt. Joseph lived 110 years. He saw Ephraim's sons to the third generation. The sons of Manasseh's son, Makir, were recognized by Joseph. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will certainly come to your aid and bring you up from this land to the land he swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Joseph made the sons of Israel take an oath. When God comes to your aid, you are to carry my bones up from here. Joseph died at the age of 110. They embalmed him and placed him in a coffin in Egypt. We continue to progress through Jesus's last week before his suffering and death. His enemies continue to plot against him, but their plan is not the one that will be carried out. No, God's plan will be the one that is carried out. Today we see that Jesus being anointed um, at Bethany at a um, meal given by the Simon the leper, and we see that Jesus sees that this anointing is actually preparing him for his burial. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a cunning way to arrest Jesus and kill him. Not during the festival, they said, so that there won't be a riot among the people. While he was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured it on his head. But some were expressing indignation to one another. Why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they began to scold her. Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a noble thing for me. You always have the poor with you, and you can do what is good for them whenever you want. But you do not always have me. 
She has done what she could. She has anointed my body in advance for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. And when they heard this, they were glad and promised to give him money. So he started looking for a good opportunity to betray him. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.